Today, I'll be unboxing and demonstrating this SP1 3D printer by Spark3D. It's great for the beginner user with room to progress, and it's got some really great auto features that help kickstart the setup process for immediate plug and play. Hi, and welcome back to Box, where we unbox, review, and demonstrate the latest tech. Inside the box, I found everything I needed for assembly, including tools, an SD card and reader, as well as enough filament to do one small print. With all the parts laid out on the table, it did look a little complicated to assemble, but it does come with a really in-depth guide with step-by-step -step picture instructions to help me avoid making mistakes early on. There was also a video guide online as well, which I found extremely helpful for showing me how to put together the more fiddly aspects. Assembly itself only really takes about 20 minutes at most, and the majority of it is pretty self-explanatory, involving a lot of clipping go attachments. Once it was assembled, plugged in and switched on, it was time to see what it could do. Now I didn't start with any custom settings, just the default settings on startup to get a good idea on how easy it would be to use from a beginner's perspective. Being a beginner myself, I immediately saw the amount of auto features on offer, such as auto bed leveling and filament loading. These features just take a lot of the difficulty away from the setup stage and it really helped me get into the first print quicker. Just taking a look at the overall design, it does seem to be built with ease of use in mind. It's simple black colouring with that very very striking gold print bed makes it easy to fit into any surroundings. The whole unit measures about 15 inches deep, 13.5 inches wide and a max height of 25 inches with the spool mounted on the top. The print bed size is also quite generous, coming in at 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters, which is plenty of space for a whole range of small and large prints. But if like me you've also had problems lifting finished prints from a bed in the past, then you will be pleased to see that it has a flexible magnetized print plate for lifting your creations right off and peeling them away cleanly. It might not be a big feature to some, but I also like the addition of this little handle on the top. It it does make moving it around a breeze, especially when considering the amount of delicate components and wires around the machine that I don't want to knock or compress when lifting. On the top you'll find a handy filament spool that holds a whole range of spool sizes and makes it much easier for automatic filament take up. For the demonstration I will be using this standard 1.75mm PLA, which is great for printing larger or identical prints, but it also supports ABS and PETG filaments too. Something you don't see too often in low cost printers though is an automatic filament loader and detector. Now rather than relying on feeding the filament through each time, this smart system takes the filament in from the side, preheats and pushes it through the nozzle as well as ejecting the filament when you need to change it. Now it does all of this with just a touch of a button and works straight away without any hassle. The filament detector is also something I think I'd probably rely on quite a bit, reducing any instances of the filament running out before I can stop it, especially for those larger prints that I might not sit and watch to completion. Mounted to the side you'll find it has a handy 4.3 inch colour display housing all of the controls that you could need. I personally prefer 3D printers with this type of control. It is a huge help being able to scroll through all the features and test them out directly, as as well as giving a visual gauge of important stats during prints. It's also very easy to read, and despite the display losing a little bit of clarity when you look at it from a sharper angle, it is really responsive and very easy to understand. The auto leveling stage did take a few minutes, but was precise and pretty accurate. Better yet, the bed was already level enough right out of the box that I didn't really need to make any manual adjustments. The Z offset seemed to work best when adjusting it in increments of 0.5, but the sweet spot seemed to be around minus 3.05 for a nice smooth result. Getting into the print stage, there are a few files that were already loaded onto the micro SD that was included with the printer. Though you might not get these exact prints, it does come with a few basics that are really good benchmarks for testing out the settings and temperature for example. Now I'm pretty happy printing blind here and testing out three different prints just to see how well it does straight out of the box. But the SD card does also come with its very own Spark 3D slicer for managing your prints digitally beforehand. Now I have used a couple of the popular free slicers before, like Cura, when testing out a few other low cost printers in the past, and from opening up this program I actually preferred it based on how easy it was to use at a beginner level. I like how I can manipulate the print around the bed in the program using simple click and drag commands, and the tools are really simple to understand and execute without too much trial and error. It might not be as advanced as some of the free programs out there, but this program has been designed to work best with this printer, working to its strengths as a beginner friendly interface, and already having all of those correct settings preloaded for instant plug and play use. To start, I'm going to print this simple Spark 3D logo. Now it's quite flat with no complicated supports and a honeycomb centre, so it should be quite quick to print with not a lot of room for mistakes. Hey. 
So after taking roughly two hours, this print came out surprisingly well. As you can see towards the end, the corner did lift ever so slightly, causing the edge of the print to be thinner than the rest and distorting the S a little bit. But looking at the actual print quality, it's smooth and consistent, which is very surprising for a default blind print. I did this print at a slightly higher Z offset, so it probably had trouble sticking to the bed, but for a first print, I hardly have any fault to pick with it. I also thought the flexible print bed really helped here, with flat prints like this, allowing an easy peel off without any damage. Next up, I wanted to try something with a bit more height and complex detail, so I went for the 3D Benchy Boat. As this is often used as a common benchmark for most printers, the settings remain the same, printing blind once more. With the second print down, again the results were resoundingly flawless. It did stick down firmly to the bed this time, and the layers are almost indistinguishable at first glance. If I were to pick faults, the areas where it finished off the arches with no supports were a little bit rough, but mostly it's perfect and I'm very satisfied with these default results. After two very good prints with little setbacks, I'm currently impressed with what this printer can do without any expertise. Even the small problems that I did encounter, like the print not sticking, could easily be fixed with the smallest adjustments, giving me much more confidence confidence and success in the next print. Moving on to the last print, I wanted to attempt a slightly more complex design. This chain design should print a working linked print, and it hasn't got any supports, so I'm really hoping this one completes my perfect printing streak. Okay, so I might have jinxed it a bit, but to be honest, I'm still relatively pleased with how this turned out. The link on the end must have slipped in the time that I stepped out, stopping me from catching the cause of the error. But assuming it was the same fault as the Spark 3D logo, where I didn't quite set the right distance between the nozzle and the bed, it did seem like it was something I could have fixed easily enough. But looking at the finished chain, it did come out quite clean and sturdy. Looking closer, I can see a few areas where the print didn't close on the underside, but this isn't too bad considering this is where it had no support, and most of the print quality is smooth and precise over roughly about 80% of the coverage, and it actually works like a real chain, which is a print I've never attempted before. So after using it for a few hours, I was overly impressed with how easy it was to use and the high quality of the prints. There are a few standout features that I liked, including the automatic filament loading, detection, and bed leveling. Considering that I'm at a beginner level, it made 3D printing accessible for me in a way that I could confidently attempt simple and even more complex prints with very little faults. Running a few prints back to back, the fans were surprisingly quiet as well compared to some of the other printers that I've used in the past, not even hearing it at all from across the room or even in an adjoining room. The whole experience from setup to print was overly positive and I felt that I didn't need to ask for much help. It also has some more intricate settings that could be utilised further in the future when I start to move on to more intermediate prints, but overall I thought this printer was well built, well thought out and kind of the perfect machine for getting into 3D printing with ease. So what are your thoughts on this 3D printer? Let us know in the comments below, and if you did like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Box's YouTube channel, where we have plenty of hands-on reviews on the latest tech. And as always, thanks for watching.